welcome to International Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. International Hawaii showcases local import and export businesses to help others new to the industry. Today, my guest is Randy Kuba, founder of Manasu and some other local companies. They are a local import company and also a foreign trade zone line tenant. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me, Randy. Hi, thank you for inviting, Cindy. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have you. Um, could you briefly explain what your company is and how you got started? Well, Manasu LLC is mm -hmm. a local manufacturing import company, and we um, <clears throat> uh, import uh, uh, healthy drinking vinegar from Okinawa, and we bottle it here, and we add some uh, Hawaiian ingredients to make it a made in Hawaii with a lower product down here. And um, uh, yeah, that's the basic uh, thrust of our company. How did you how did you start like why did you choose this product and how did you get into it how did you find the product itself too well i also bring in um what they call awamori is a distilled spirit from uh, okinawa with another mm -hmm. company <clears throat> and um manasu is a byproduct of awamori so in other words the liquid that's not made into alcohol um <clears throat> they save it and they uh make it in they turn it into vinegar and that vinegar basically is a, a healthy, um, non-alcohol, uh, mm -hmm. uh, similar to apple cider vinegar. Um, and um, I happened to go to Okinawa and then um, uh, visit the Aomori factories and they introduced this, they call it mana, um, they call it monomisu in uh, Okinawa. Um, but I felt it was too complicated to say that word Monomisu and bring it here. Mm -hmm. So I created my own brand called Manasu. Mana meaning a um, uh, vital uh, energy in Hawaiian and su mm -hmm. meaning vinegar in Japanese. Okay, so you, were you looking specifically for something to import while you were in Okinawa? Well, I always brought in awamori, yeah. Um, oh, and, um, and because um, the See, when I went to Okinawa, I went basically to find my heritage, uh, understand my culture. And in the meantime, I bumped into a lot of incredible human beings. And there are the villagers in Okinawa, in the remote villages in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And um, they were extremely healthy. And they always mm -hmm. drank this vinegar um, throughout the day. They just sipped it uh, along with their tea. And... Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, Okinawa is known to be the healthiest and longest living uh, human beings in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I brought that product back and, and introduced it to some athletes here and some karate practitioners. And the older Okinawans uh, know what it is. And that was my base of customers here. And so they continue to buy it from me. Wow, interesting. I'm surprised it's not more popular. Like I haven't, I haven't heard of that. Mm. Well, yeah, it's um, you know, I guess apple cider vinegar is the vinegar mm. to drink drink in the Western world, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. moromisu or what we call manasu here, um, is just, is a new product. You know, um, oh, I see, I see. In Japan, all of Japan, they always drink vinegar, or seventy percent of the population drinks vinegar, wow. uh, in some form, yeah, in some form. And um, uh, that's my mission and my goal is to introduce this new healthy drinking vinegar in, into the Western world. So when you found your supplier for Manasu, is it the same supplier that you brought your awamori from? Yeah, same, exact same suppliers. Um, there's about 47 different awamori factories in Okinawa. And um, wow. about only maybe about 10 of them uh, produce that uh, uh, drinking vinegar and um, that's who I was associated with before and mm -hmm. they continue to supply. Oh that's great and I'm half Okinawan and I didn't oh. know my family doesn't drink vinegar. Does it taste like vinegar? Like you're drinking vinegar? Well there's three types of, of uh, vinegar that I bring in. Um, one is uh, uh, vinegar with uh, black uh, Okinawan sugar and um, the reason why is because the Western people, they like that sweetness, that sweet taste. So it's easy to drink. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does have, have black sugar. And black sugar is a natural black sugar in Okinawa. It's not mm-hmm. fine white sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one is uh, I bring it in plain or the all natural. And it does taste a little uh, like apple cider vinegar. And um, um, and the third one is um, uh, the capsules. So the capsules are um, a natural uh, vinegar uh, on, in capsule form. So that's <laughs> why um, it's, it's a lot healthier for you because it doesn't have the black sugar, but um, mm. uh, you know, it, it's very yeah, you complete. Don't, you don't taste it, you just swallow Yeah, you, you don't taste the vinegar, you just <laughs> swallow the capsule. <laughs> Got it. And so when you bring in the capsules, are they already, like, so do you import them in bulk and then you repackage them here? Is that what you're doing? Or? Yeah, so I, I bring everything in bulk here. I import oh, okay. the, uh, uh, it comes in with the aomori. The, the, the oh, okay, vinegar. everything comes together. Yeah, so it comes in bulk. And then mm-hmm. uh, when it comes in here, I bottle it here, uh, cap it here, um, label it here. <clears throat> and same thing with the capsules. Yeah, it's all. Uh, bottled here in in Hawaii. Okay. What was the what was the biggest challenge in starting up your company in Hawaii? Um. Well, I think you know that the cost of living here is high. Yeah. The um, <laughs> warehousing is high. The shipping is high. <clears throat> um. Um. We would have to get get the the components from outside of Hawaii. The mm-hmm. bottles I get from Mexico. The caps from. Uh, Napa Valley, the um, labels from Colorado, uh, liquid wow. from Okinawa, and it all comes here, and then we put it together. And um, of course, the label design is made here. Mm-hmm. Uh, try to use local graphic designers here. Nice. So wow, that's yeah. the challenge. Yeah, it's like getting sense. the components here. Yeah. How about even um trying to import spirits. Is that more challenging than regular, bringing in regular product? Yeah, it's, it's much more challenging. Um, <clears throat> and the reason is because you got to go through these regulations. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's highly regulated, uh, both federal and state and city mm-hmm. and county. So you would have to get the licenses first to import it. And of course, um, uh, dealing with alcohol, you're, you're, you're always dealing with different people. You know, um, Mm-hmm. So is it just more paperwork and more regulations that you just need to be aware of and comply with? Yeah, there's tariffs to deal with, there's customs to deal with. Um, you know, of course, you got to label approve all of your alcohol. Um, mm-hmm. You got to formula approve it to the federal government. They call it TTB, Tax and Trade Bureau. And it, all of that needs to be done <clears throat> before it's imported here in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we import the the Aomori um, from Okinawa, <clears throat> and it, it helps because we import the, the vinegar and the Aomori at the same time, so it mm-hmm. cuts down on the cost. Yeah, so you have more to ship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any horror stories about um, importing? Any any really <laughs> bad things happen? <laughs> well, I, I think the important thing is to really be a good operator, <clears throat> and when I mean good operator, um, uh, because the components come from all different areas, mm-hmm. um, um, you just have to keep checking and double checking with your suppliers and trust your suppliers mm-hmm. that they're going to send you the correct um, component. So one of the horror, horror stories when I first began is I, I didn't double check on certain things. So the bottles came in, the liquid came in, labels, of course, came in. But the caps is what we call T caps. The T caps didn't fit. <clears throat> on the bottle. Oh no. So if it doesn't fit on the bottle, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, can't see it. Wow. If it doesn't fit on the bottle, you can't complete the product. Yeah. So, and you would have to call the supplier, work it out with the supplier, send the correct um, uh, cap in, and then reschedule your workers. And then. And in the meantime, everything's just sitting the there. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then start all over again. And then, um, Hmm. you know, so all the components need to fit. Um, You need to double check before it's shipped out because once it's Hmm. shipped out, 
once it gets to Hawaii, um, it's yours. Mm. And then you'll take everything to unravel to get <laughs> it back to the supplier because you don't need it. <clears throat> and um, get reimbursed by the shipping uh -huh. company. Well, you can't get reimbursed by the shipping company, but <clears throat> uh, hopefully by the supplier. By the supplier, yeah. That is challenging, especially putting together all these different components from different places. How did you yeah. How did you find your different suppliers for all um, the different products? Well, it's just by word of mouth. You know, when you're in the distilled spirits industry, it's a close close knit industry. So mm -hmm. you're talking to other distillers, small distillers mm -hmm. in different states, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they always recommend a good supplier for something. You know, whether it's labels, bottles, caps. Um, seals um cartons uh shipping companies trucking companies you know they're all mm -hmm. close knit so okay you know, yeah yeah and that's how i start getting into the industry you just hear from different people about what yeah. they're doing yeah and okay you you really have to be relentless and tenacious in calling different people <clears throat> and asking their advice you know and mm -hmm. they're very willing to give advice because they're in the same boat as you. Mm. And hopefully someday we'll do business in the future. Oh, that's good. That's really good. So it's about building those relationships with people in the industry. Yeah, it's, it's about networking and it's about joining mm -hmm. different associations, the, mm -hmm. the Steel Spirits Associations and the Health Associations and so forth. And they're very helpful. Good. We're all in the same boat and we're trying to make it. That's good. That's good. I mean, it's not good. It's Good that it's not cutthroat and just there are not nice. <laughs> yeah, but you know <clears throat> and that's some of the you know, thing the challenges there you know? mm -hmm, yeah. that's why you really have to trust and get to know the, the suppliers mm -hmm. and your customers and so forth mm -hmm. well, we got a question from one of our viewers they're asking um what does manasu help with like what types of um ailments or symptoms mm -hmm. or what are the health benefits <clears throat> Well, um, anything apple cider vinegar does, Manasu does also. Uh, Manasu, the, the component is, it has 43 uh, more citric acid than um, any other vinegar. And the oh. citric acid is, is the key because it um, helps regulate your alkaline and um, <clears throat> um, it helps with, um, a lot of athletes use it because uh, sometimes they get cramps. So when they're working mm. out hard, some of the athletes before they carry around pickle juice to alleviate the cramps or they carry around mustard. So with the Manasu, when you take it daily, it uh, does eliminate the cramps. Really? Huh. So a lot of karate practitioners use it. Um, uh, a lot of good athletes that you know run and, and are active hiking and so forth, they, they're using it mm. now. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. That's great. We gotta let more people know about it. Um, we're going to take a quick break. This is International Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to International Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. This is Cindy Matsuki, your host from the Foreign Trade Zone 9. Our guest today is Randy Kuba. He's the founder of Manasu. It is a health product, a vinegar health product. And so we were just talking about um, the health benefits of Manasu and about marketing the product because 
I hadn't heard of it before, and I definitely heard of apple cider vinegar. But how are you? How are you growing your market for Manasu? Well, right now I'm trying to learn things on uh, social media. And I'm mm -hmm. getting help from the, the state on that. Um, uh, I think right now it's just by word of mouth, and um, you know I was very mm -hmm. fortunate because a lot of the Okinawan community they, they purchase it by by families. So they'll buy it in um, cases, and then when wow. they buy the cases, they pick it up and they distribute it to their family members. And basically, that's how it's it's um, being distributed now. It's also in Times uh, supermarkets, <clears throat> um, uh, not all of the Times, but the key about seven or eight Times supermarkets. It's in um, hmm. the Ake shop in Kakaako, uh, Marukai, and Don Quixote uh, also carries it, okay. and then some other smaller. Uh, uh, specialty shops around town. Okay, good. As a health product. In the health uh, section, yeah. Health mm. or vinegar section in the supermarkets. Mm. I'll have to go look for that. <clears throat> and then you mentioned you got assistance from the state. What uh, what programs did you take advantage of? Well, because um, the, the COVID uh, uh, last year <clears throat> developed mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, of course, a lot of the restaurants were closing down. So I was going to have a program with them called Mock Cocktails. Mock Cocktails are cocktails without alcohol. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, um, you know, that, of course, that didn't develop. So I was forced to pretty much learn how to go online quickly. So the state mm -hmm. um, helped with Ellen's uh, program. Uh, we had nine classes that taught about uh, the marketing and the Mm. operations and how to deal with Shopify and um, all of the things that I didn't know that I had to learn quickly. And that's how basically I'm getting the products now to the mainland uh, customers. It's oh, great. All, all online now. Yeah. That's and, great. Uh, so you've seen your online sales grow since you've launched your online presence? Yeah, it's, it's, it's growing uh, steady and slowly. Um, and you know, the majority of customers are in California. Mm. Um, surprisingly, there's a big gap between customers in California and then on the East Coast, they're ordering a lot. <clears throat> and anywhere in between, there's not much. But California <laughs> and the East Coast is where the customers are right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's great. And do you think, I mean, what, what has been the impact of the pandemic on your company? Well, I think it forced us, or forced me anyway, to learn online quickly. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's the key because it opened up a whole area of customers outside of Hawaii, um, not only in California and the East Coast, but I had, we're getting inquiries now from Canada, Vancouver, and Toronto. And um, I think that's where the, that's probably where the future is, is, you know, learning high tech and online and getting to these people in a targeted uh, marketing strategy um, mm -hmm. instead of shotgunning all over the place. And, mm -hmm. that's and then your, market, your yeah. market is so much bigger. I mean, compared to just marketing in Hawaii, you know, you can market to wherever. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the, the what I learned uh, with the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much forced me to do online quickly and learn quickly um, how to deal with Shopify, shipping, shipping companies like Federal Express, UPS, the post office and so forth. And um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's that's where the advantage is right now. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you take advantage of the foreign trade zone now that you're here since you're here? Well, I, I was always at the foreign trade zone, but um, <clears throat> the thing is that uh, we had a tasting room you know, in mm -hmm. M426, and a lot of the buyers and the restaurant owners came in and tasted not only the distilled spirits, but the vinegar. Mm -hmm. But because we couldn't have the tasting room, um, it turned into an office and it turned into a, a online uh, assembly oh. operation. So mm -hmm. that's where I send out the packages to the mainland. So. Um, and the post office and Federal Express and UPS, they all come on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So 
that's how I get it out. Got it. And then what advice would you give to somebody who's thinking about importing or just starting out importing? Do you have any advice or lessons learned that you want to help somebody not? <laughs> Well, I I think it's it's learning how to deal with people, yeah. You know, because you you're you're still dealing with people, no matter if you go online or text. Mm. Um, it's building good relationships with your suppliers and trusting them, and they trust you, and of course, mm -hmm. the customers. And I I'm still learning how to deal with people because there's all mm -hmm. different types of people. There's aggressive people and there's passive, and you mm -hmm. know, uh, it's just no matter what you have to sell. You know, you have to sell to these people and people are going to sell to you and um, uh, adjusting mm -hmm. to those people because people is what, you know, they buy and sell products. And if you deal with them correctly, then, um, <laughs> you know, you'll get progress. You'll have a sale. <laughs> you'll have a sale, yeah. yeah. Do you work with um, a customs broker to help you with uh, your importing? Yeah, I work with Lance Sato. And, um, <clears throat> Uh, he does everything, and that's why I like dealing with him because you know <clears throat> he goes above and beyond, and um, that's he's very helpful. He he does he does everything for me. You know? mm, yeah. So I, you know, as an importer, it's very important to find a good broker that you can work with. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure your products are clear. Yeah, and I like think him. that's the. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, and I think that's the key is dealing with uh, people that you trust. And it, mm -hmm. it took a long time for me to get the right components, whether it's a customs broker, shipping company, suppliers for bottles, suppliers for labels, the, the caps, and uh, the liquid, of course. And mm -hmm. then dealing with a good warehouse. That uh, and I do have the warehouse at uh, in back of Aloha Tofu, and they've been extremely helpful. Oh, good. Yeah, it's so complex, and it sounds like you have to deal with so many different people. It's good that you have to find people you trust, definitely. Mm. Um, where can people find out more information about your products? Um, well, besides going to Times and uh, Marukai and Don Quixote and the Saki Shop and some of the other uh, smaller retailers, you can go online and um, get the information, uh, healthymanasu.com. And um, um, you know, we can make appointments one on one at the tasting room. Uh, okay. Online and, and yeah. And, um, is the tasting room just for customers, or is it for businesses? Um, I I open it up to everyone because I'm trying to mm -hmm. educate people about uh, uh, not only about the, the manasu but about our mm -hmm. own. So it's it's uh it's open to everyone. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Very good. Yeah. And then lastly, this is my random question that I give to all my guests, but different questions. What has been your pandemic pastime activity? <laughs> Mine has been gardening. <laughs> um, you know, I, when you're on your own business, it's... it's you have no time. You have no time. It's like 24 <laughs> hours. So I, I try to... <laughs> oh my god. I, I try to walk if if that's possible, but you know, um and um Good. I'll, I'll I'll get my wife to walk too. Like, <laughs> that's our quality time together. Yeah, that's good. Have you been do you find that you've been busier now that you're online? Well, yeah, I mean you, you have to work harder, of course, because yeah. you know, um <clears throat> um I do have some independent contractors that I bring in. <clears throat> Not only produce the uh, bottle, bottle, but you know, pack the mm. uh, pack the packages and so forth. Mm -hmm, sure but thing. yeah, working much harder because we you have to work harder you know, mm. because there's you know there's just you got just just one shot right, at customers. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it should be right. Yeah. Wow, that's mm. amazing! I give you so much credit. <laughs> Small businesses work so hard. It's great. Yeah. And Thank just you. to just to make a plug is that um, a lot of uh, us we, we pretty much rely on dealing with small business to small business because we're all on the same boat. Mm. Um, it is good dealing with larger businesses, but um, you know I really admire small businesses for keeping up with what they're doing. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. So challenging.
Definitely. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me on International Hawaii. Okay. Thank, thank you for inviting me, Cindy. I appreciate it. Yeah. And then we'll see you here next time on Think Tech on inter with International Hawaii. Thanks.